Hey, good morning and welcome. Thank you for dialing in. My name is Bruce Watkins and I'm with the Field Marketing Organization here at NetApp. And today we're going to be reviewing the Cisco Live Show that just occurred in Las Vegas last week. So before we get started, we're going to have just a couple housekeeping items to touch base on. So the lines are going to be muted and that's really to uh, prevent the background noise. However, we encourage questions. If you have any questions, feel free to use the chat feature on the lower left-hand corner of your screen. Uh, so we we'll appreciate that. And as a thank you for your time and for registering, uh, you're going to receive a pair of socks for, for your time. So hopefully you filled out your address on the registration page. But thank you for that. Look for a pair of socks here in the next uh, 7 to 10 days as our thank you. Today's session is probably going to be around 15-20 uh, minutes, so we're trying to keep it short and sweet for you. And it's really just designed to give you the highlights from the Cisco Live Show in case you weren't able to, to attend. Now we have the agenda up on the, up on the screen, and really we just have one slide for each agenda. So we're going to try and keep this very, uh, each agenda item. Keep it very conversational. Uh, we're not going to kill you with slide wear. Uh, we'll just kind of give you the highlights. If you would like more information, we do have a list of contacts, and those contacts are also some presenters today. And so we're going to kind of run this as a panel discussion. So joining us on the phone today is number one, Chad Smith, who's the technical marketing engineer here at NetApp. Chad, are you on board? I am on. Outstanding. Uh, we also have Rip Wilson, who's a product marketing manager here at NetApp. Rip? Hey, good morning, Bruce. And also we have Andy Sayer, who's with us, who's a senior manager with the FlexPod Solutions Marketing Group. Andy, are you on board? I sure am. Good morning. Excellent. Thank you. So that's a quick note about the panel. This is all about Cisco Live, what we saw and what was observed at the show. Um, and with that, let's kind of talk a little bit um, specifically about the show, and let's start off with who attends the show. And with that, let me throw out to the panel, who did you see? Who's the show for? Well, so, uh, oh, I was going to say, so, <laughs> okay, I'll start, then you chime in. How's that, Rip? Um, sure. So Cisco Live typically is a pretty technical show. Uh, you don't see uh, a whole lot of senior executives running around the show floor. What you see is a lot of technical folks who are networking, who are wanting to understand the latest and greatest in terms of uh, the Cisco uh, offerings and the Cisco ecosystem of partners uh, out there in the world. It's a pretty well attended show this year. We hear the numbers were about 28,000. I think it makes it the largest Cisco Live ever. Uh, NetApp was there in force. Uh, we had about 10% of all the people at the show come through our booth, uh, which was great. And um, we saw uh, you know, a number of keynotes at the show that were talking about new initiatives at Cisco, such as digitization, as well as something they're calling tetration which is uh, the ability to sort of do packet level analysis of what's going on um, in your network, um, which uh, NetApp is supporting. So um, it was a great show, a lot of great energy, a lot of great um, track sessions that were uh, focused on a variety of interesting topics. So uh, anything you would add to that, Rip? No, I think you're, uh, you're spot on. You know, my, my comment is just going to be uh, echoing a little bit of that. Very technical audience, um, lots of Cisco people, um, and lots of customers. Um, certainly some partners were there as well, but you know, the, the people I saw seemed to be heavy customer, heavy uh, Cisco internal. What, where was the show held? Was it at the convention center? It was, uh, we're in Las Vegas at the Mandalay Bay Resort. Um, it was good to be inside. The air conditioning was working quite well. I think it was well over 100 in Vegas last week, so uh, it was quite a, quite a week. So do we think this show is shrinking or growing in size and popularity? Did you get a vibe from previous experiences? Oh, it's definitely growing. Um, it is um, – uh, I have the um, – the good fortune to attend the uh, Europe show as well as um, the U.S. show, and both of them are growing 
pretty substantially. So, uh, you know, I think, you know, regardless of uh, whether IT is shrinking or growing or moving to the cloud, I think there's still tremendous interest in what um, Cisco is offering to uh, the technical community. Nice. So uh, I know there was a booth there, but as you guys walked the, the floor, did you get a sense of kind of what was on display at the show? I mean, is it storage centric? Is it uh, what's kind of what do you see there if, if you're there on the show? It's just a bunch of sessions, or what's your take on that? Uh, well, I think yeah, I mean, okay. Go ahead, Jen. Uh, you know, from my experience, what I saw was definitely a lot of network centric vendors, uh, a lot of monitoring vendors focusing on things around SDN, um, visibility into the network. That was, that was a, a, a big thing that I saw. Um, among the normal stuff around uh, the, the typical network vendors, um, application vendors around uh, integrations with Cisco, et cetera. Nice. Yeah, I would agree. I think the, you know, the storage vendors were there, but I think from an attendee perspective, um, definitely dominated by you know more of the network people, um, you know the Cisco sort of oriented people, um, and, and I would agree. So even though the storage vendors were there, that wasn't they certainly weren't dominant on the in the world of solutions and the other sort of uh, auxiliary events around the show itself. Yeah, I would also add that um, so NetApp was one of the three diamonds level sponsors, you know, top level sponsors for the show. It was NetApp, EMC, and Intel. Uh, so two of those are certainly st showing storage. Um, and uh, but I would agree that the vast majority of other um, show sponsors were in the networking field. So it was uh, or supporting the networking field. Um, so that was um, that was the emphasis, I think. Got it. And, and so, what was what was your take on the vibe of the show? Were, were people upbeat? Were they like, "Oh, it's been a tough year"? Is it, you know, let's? What, what, what's the take on the vibe? I was impressed. You no, know, good. Book. Go ahead. I'm oh, sorry. I was impressed with, um, you know, I thought there was just seemed to be a lot of people around all the time, and I think they were. You know, so it wasn't like people were losing interest and dying off. You know, the hallways were always crowded. People were always moving from, you know, one session to the next or, or one event to the next. Um, you know, and I think they did a good job in the hallways of keeping people engaged and, and keeping everything upbeat. So it seemed to be seemed very positive, very energetic, um, just lots of activity at all hours. Yeah, and I would echo that with the show floor as well. You know, when the show floor was open, uh, NetApp had an incredibly um, great position. For whatever reason, they had one main door that went in and out of the expo for you know almost 30,000 people. And when the show doors would open, the floor, the people would stream through um, in huge numbers and uh, you know pass right by the NetApp booth, which was fabulous because we had a tremendous amount of traffic as a result of that. Excellent. Okay, well, thank you. That is a good lead into let's talk a little bit about the, the NetApp booth. And Rip, I want to throw this out to you to start. What were kind of the general focus areas for NetApp that displayed at Cisco Live? Yeah, the, the two that, that stuck out for me, um, and one of which I think was great, and we're going to touch a little bit more on it um, here on the next slide, which was our, our FlexPod presence. Um, you know, we did have a FlexPod on display, which is the um, converged infrastructure offering that's a joint offering between Cisco and NetApp. Um, you know, we had a, a couple of FlexPod systems there, uh, lots of interest, obviously, with, you know, we talked about the attendees being kind of the networking crowd and whatnot. So great interest in the FlexPod, uh, lots of customers coming through telling us, hey, we have a FlexPod. Um, and, you know, I think the other big sort of a focus for us was the solid fire presence. So this is the first really big show we've done since the Solid Fire acquisition. Uh, we did have lots of customers who are familiar with NetApp um, wanting to come by and learn more about Solid Fire, have conversations there. Um, so that was very exciting. I think lots of interest. Um, you know, we got to tell the Solid Fire story, which was fantastic. Um, so those two were the big for me. Uh, we did have a mini theater as well, and you know, running a presentation every half hour. 
and you know, data fabric was a key topic in that. We were talking about the NetApp data fabric. Um, great, great interest. I think every one of those mini theater sessions, all the seats were full. Um, so we saw a lot of interest there as well. Um, and then we had other stuff talking about our integration with Cisco Cloud Architecture and, and some other things. But those were really the, the highlights for me. Perfect. Uh, Chad or Andy, anything to add on that? Yeah, a few things. So uh, if you look at the slide right there, you'll see uh, a, a, a photo at the top. I don't know if you recognize those folks, but some interesting folks came by the NetApp booth. Uh, on the far left is Wendy Barr, who runs uh, sales for all of Cisco. Next to her is Maria Olson, who is NetApp's VP of Alliances, who essentially runs the alliance between Cisco and NetApp. Uh, next to her is Chuck Robbins, who of course is the CEO of Cisco. Uh, and next to him, of course, is Val Bergvici, who is the CTO of SolidFire. So we had some great visitors uh, in the booth. They're standing right in front of a FlexPod there, if you can make that out. Um, we had a number of FlexPods at the show. In fact, uh, we had two FlexPods in our booth. We had the full rack there, and then just behind it, you can't see it, is a um, we had our FlexPod with infrastructure automation in it, which was a 24U um, smaller version of a FlexPod meant for a remote office or branch. And um, that particular FlexPod features the ability to, um, to be ready to load software in under an hour uh, through some automation that we've developed uh, for the FlexPod. Uh, in addition to that, FlexPod was just about everywhere. We had uh, FlexPod in the Avnet booth. There was a rack there. There was a FlexPod in the um, CDW booth. Um, and uh, there was a FlexPod in the Cisco area as well. So FlexPod was well represented uh, on the show floor. In addition to that, we had four speaking sessions uh, that talked um, about NetApp and SolidFire and FlexPod. Um, one of them was focused on the Network Operations Center because um, one thing that's interesting is that the entire Cisco Live show runs on FlexPod. So uh, all of the, la the hands-on labs, all of the communications, all of the, uh, the Wi-Fi, everything is built around a FlexPod. Um, that has been stood up uh, a couple days in advance of uh, the Cisco Live Show. It features the All Flash FAS and Metro Cluster, our ability to have sort of an active-active um, setup uh, in multiple locations uh, for the show floor. Um, so FlexPod was really everywhere. Um, we had uh, great attendance at these speaking sessions uh, and um, it was uh, really a good turnout for, uh, for FlexPod this year. So when folks stopped at the booth, was it, uh, was it about FlexPod? Was it about some other things? Tell me a little bit more about the, the presence of FlexPod within the booth and what some of those discussions centered around. Well, so, um, you know, there, was, there were some questions about what is a FlexPod? What is this thing I'm looking at? Um, and you know, for those who may not know, FlexPod is a converged infrastructure solution that's a joint offering between Cisco and NetApp. It features Cisco UCS, Cisco Nexus, and um, NetApp FAS um, for now. And uh, that is uh, all pulled together into a single unified uh, framework for management uh, that allows very simple operations um, for essentially standing up your own private cloud or connecting into your hybrid cloud strategy uh, for your company. So there was a lot of folks who were curious about this, uh, this offering. Uh, a lot of customers would come by wanting to know what was new <clears throat> with FlexPod this year. And of course, we talked about our automation capabilities, which I mentioned earlier. We also talked about uh, some new lifecycle management services that we're offering that essentially keeps your FlexPod up to date over the, the asset life uh, of the FlexPod. Uh, we talked about um, the ability to uh, order, um, order a FlexPod from, um, as, a, as if you were ordering a product 
where you can just pick which configuration you would like uh, to deploy at your enterprise and essentially place the order and get that shipped to you within about 14 days uh, here in the U.S. Um, and have that uh, be ready to stand up with your, um, with your applications or workloads uh, very quickly. So we talked about a lot of those sort of new capabilities with FlexPod. There was some curiosity about whether we're integrating SolidFire into FlexPod, and the answer is yes, we are. We've got uh, currently the ability to add on SolidFire to an existing FlexPod, and that has been certified in our labs. Um, so we have a NetApp validated architecture um, documentation that supports that kind of approach. We're also working on a fully solid fire based flex pod that um, is in development right now. So there was lots of new things to talk about with FlexPod, and um, we had you know hundreds of those conversations during the show. Outstanding. Okay. Um, so as we review the show, we talked a little bit about the booth. Um, what else about the show in general? Uh, who, should, who should attend the show next year? Well, I think if, um, if you have interest in uh, FlexPod, in SolidFire, in Cisco, uh, this is the show that you should be at uh, because it is probably the industry's foremost networking event um, where you can uh, mix and mingle with your colleagues. Um, speaking of which, we had uh, a couple of events that we put on ourselves. We had a uh, customer VIP reception on uh, the first night of the show where we had several hundred customers come out to the foundation room, which um, if you don't know is at the top floor of the Mandalay Bay. It's an incredibly beautiful um, room. Uh, with a beautiful bal balcony from the 62nd floor uh, that allowed us to look all over the strip and uh, really um, mix and mingle with our colleagues um, across uh, both customers, partners, and um, amongst ourselves, amongst Cisco and NetApp and SolidFire folks. Great time was to be had. And that's the, the theme of Cisco. It's, it's the event where you get to network and really understand what's going on in technology and uh, it's highly recommended. Um, you know, Las Vegas is always easy to get to, um, and um, one of those things that uh, you know most of us end up going to uh, multiple times a year. Perfect. Thank you, Andy. Um, I guess to, to chime into that, next year's show for Cisco Live has not been announced yet that I have seen. However, I assume it's about the same time uh, as, as this year's. However, I did see that there's a uh, Cisco Live in Cancun in November, so you know, try and, try and get to that. Uh, there's a Cisco Live in Berlin in February of next year and then Melbourne in March. So anyway, a great show. It sounds like uh, a lot of things are happening on the technology front. If you're interested in FlexPod, it's definitely the, the place to, to get more info. That's about it. Let me throw it around for any closing thoughts. Rip, anything from you as we close out? Well, one thing uh, I guess struck me as, as Andy was talking there about the show, I think from an attendee perspective, um, it's really a great blend of hearing the Cisco vision, so very high level, kind of you know, hear what's coming, the Cisco vision for the future, as well as the very detailed technical um, accreditation classes you can take, uh, the hands-on breakouts and stuff. So you can really kind of do both extremes very well, so that the technical guys can get their uh, do some of the testing, get certified, as well as hear some of the vision. It actually reminds me a lot of our, our own NetApp Insight Show, which we do twice a year, um, which is the same sort of a feel. We have a lot of our partners come. We have a lot of customers coming now to hear the vision for the company, to hear the vision for NetApp, um, where we're going, what direction we're going, but then also a lot of great, great technical training classes, um, hands-on labs, and, and other ways to interact with the NetApp technical leaders um, at the company. So I think we see a lot of similarities there. Obviously, a, maybe a slightly different scale here for Cisco Live, but it, it's really a great show to, to cover those two um, big areas. Perfect. Chad, Andy, any closing thoughts? Sure. Um, I thought it was particularly interesting, at least on my end, um, even though it was a network-centric show, um, 
and there were very little uh, storage vendors there, we had quite a few people come by that were network folks on behalf of their storage admins. So I thought that was interesting that they were looking out for them um, still, even at a network-centric show. So it was good that we had a presence there. Perfect. And I guess I would just say in closing, I hope to see you all out there next year at Cisco Live, and I think we'll be Las Vegas. Outstanding. Okay, Andy, Chad, Rip, thank you so much for your time. Uh, folks who have dialed in, thank you. Look for a pair of socks here in the next one to two weeks. Uh, and with that, we'll give you back the, the rest of the time, and we will talk to you soon. And feel free to dial in again on September 8th, and we will review what happened at VMworld. Thanks so much for dialing in.